What a beautiful next day it is. And indeed, I do have multiple white shirts that I wear. We are going to make the edit and we're going to the advanced part of it right now because there are a couple of shots such as this transition animation right here uh, and it's opening up and we want to reveal a different shot right there. So this one should be visible as these ones open up and that is the entire idea. Of course, we are going to do that and there's a couple of other things that we're going to do such as in this social media shot, there is this YouTube logo that is crossing the entire screen. We're going to mask this out and make sure that whatever is underneath there will be shown. We're going to do some speed ramping because uh, this one is way too slow. We're going to make some camera shakes for this one to make sure it's not as well boring as this. And uh, that's basically what we're going to be doing today. So glad you have arrived. We're going to start straight away with this shot right over here. So the transition animation. First of all, make sure that you have the correct length. So you want it to be, uh, well, this one should go down. Maybe over here, let's delete this. And then this shot is happening straight after that. Ooh, very cool, that kind of aligns. And uh, we're going to place this right over there and we want it to be visible from this point onwards. So let's make sure that that's the case. There are two things we can do. So this is the easy version. Uh, right here in the cropping, which you can see by enabling the inspector, uh, we get the transform, cropping, dynamic zoom, composite, etc., etc. But we want to go into the cropping. And if we now crop this shot from the right to the left, so over here and over here, and there you have it, it's gone. So I'm going to keyframe this, keyframe here, keyframe there. And let's move all the way to the side. So over here, this is when both of them should be entirely visible. Uh, so let's make sure that that is reflected with our cropping. And now let's see what it does. And it's already sort of working, but since we placed the graph editor, since we placed an animation on the graph editor for these telephones, this one is a bit slower because it's uh, either linear or Bessier by uh, default. So we should go into the cropping frame by frame and just look at if it is following our iPhones correctly. So until here, it pretty much is for this side, but it's not for the other side. So I'm going to make sure that this is a bit wider over there, go further. Now this one should be a bit farther. Just play around with this until it works out entirely. So now this one is already a bit too fast. So let's just bring it back like this. There you have it. And that's how you make that transition animation. We didn't even have to mask anything. So that is a great plus right here. Now, if your telephones are not covering the entire screen, you can also go into the inspector right here and zoom it in just a little bit and make sure that it is the case. Uh, either way, that is the way to make that transition animation. So next up, we are going to add some camera shake. Shake to this specific iPhone shot right over here. Basically what we want to do is go over to this effects panel right here. If you do not see this, click on effects right here and it should pop up right here in the bottom. In the open effects panel, I'm going to type in camera shake. Now do be aware that you are taking this from the resolve FX transform because there's another camera shake in the camera toolbox. And uh, we have fusion transitions and fusion effects, but this is a video camera overlay like this. And the fusion camera shake is basically a way to transition to a new shot. So both of those we don't want to use. We want to go into the open FX, which is the camera shake from the resolve FX transform. Now I'm going to place this on our clip and you can see it is now wobbling around a bit but we need to change some settings in order to make this look good. So in this case, because there's so much energy coming from this iPhone, I'm going to increase the speed scale to whatever maximum we have. So two is fine. So it's moving around a lot. And uh, we want to have the delta between where the iPhone is moving. Okay, maybe that's a bit of a complex instruction. Uh, we want to decrease the amount of motion the iPhone has. So let's decrease the motion scale like this. And now it is moving around less. But we still have that speed, but this is not enough. I don't like this. It is still too soft for this uh, entire shot. If you think this is good enough, go ahead, be my guest, do whatever you want. But here we have some more settings, namely shake levels. And shake levels can be used to increase the speed some more. So let's increase the PTR speed and there you have it. Now it's really feeling as if it's struggling against the air. Uh, we can also increase the rotation amplitude, move it around a little bit like this. And uh, now we actually get some cool motion right over here. But if we want to make the shot even cooler, go into video, go to zoom and position, I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit and I will go to position and rotation angle and then I will go to the final frame, move one arrow to the left and I'm actually going to rotate this ever so slightly until we see the black bars right over there. So let's see what it does for us and it's moving upwards like that. And that gives it even more energy, I feel. Uh, but this shot is still not done. What can we do? 
Well, there is something called a bokeh overlay. So bokeh overlay light leaks with blurred lens. Now, if you look this up on the internet, you will find lots of those. Make sure that they are on black background so we only can get the light. Uh, let's drag this one on for, uh, for example. Uh, we get this cool looking effect. Make sure that you have a nice position for this. Or maybe somewhere over here, right? So I'm going to delete that part and delete that part by pressing B and deleting it. Also delete the audio, no need for the audio. I'm just going to place it right over here and uh, the iPhone is gone. So we need to go into the inspector once again, move down and go to the composite mode, set it to add. And now this is a bit too strong. So I'm also going to decrease the opacity until we get something that looks like this. Now, if you turn this on, we get some extra cool lens effects and maybe we want the part where it moves a bit like this. Make it very subtle and that just adds this extra camera effect which really integrates the iPhone better into the scene and the movement with the camera shake and all. Now the next problem, we have all this energy, this iPhone is coming upwards like struggling against the air and then we have the whoop, we're coming in here, take it easy son. That's what we're going to change. This also needs to have some energy. So right now I'm going to teach you how to make a speed ramp animation for this. And we're also going to add a little bit of camera shake to this uh, shot to make it uh, really fit in with the rest. Uh, so this is too slow. Uh, we actually want it to be quite fast all the way until over here. I'm going to click on this clip and I'm going to press Control R. And this will give us all the speed options. So here we have an arrow and I'm going to click on the arrow. And we can add a speed point or you can change the speed of the entire clip right over here. I'm not going to do that. I only want this to happen on a very specific point. So add speed point. So from here on out, we can change some things. If we now take this right side, for example, then this will be a whole lot faster. Or if we take this handle right over here, then we can make this a whole lot faster. And now it is coming in with the appropriate speed like this. Ooh. Now if you want to change the frame where it's being speed ramped on, you can also take the bottom side of this arrow and that will decide until how long it will be uh, faster. But I'm just going to keep it the way it was because I already noticed what I was doing beforehand. Very good. Now let's give this a slight wobble. So go to the effects tab right over here and type in adjustment layer. You can only find this on the toolbox. So on the toolbox adjustment clip. I call it adjustment layer because uh, I did use After Effects before this. But still, it is the adjustment layer, not adjustment clip. Anyway, we're just going to add some cool looking camera shake to this to give it some more energy. So let's grab the same camera shake that we had before. Camera shake from the open effects, drag it on the clip, make it extreme, something like, uh, like this. PTR speed up, Oof. there you go. And we want to do the YouTube animation from this part onwards. First of all, I'm going to press Ctrl R here to remove our speed ramp settings. Uh, we want this to start from over here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the next shot right underneath there and make sure that it aligns exactly with this part. Then I'm going to click on this clip and go to the Fusion tab. It's this one, the little magic one, and I'm going to click on it. Uh, then I will add a mask, which is what I'm going to be using. Just simply add it over here, don't do anything else. Shift space and add a background, BG, background right over here. I'm going to set our YouTube clip over the background itself, like this. And now the background is black, so I'm going to click on it and I want to decrease the alpha in order to make it alpha, which is a very weird thing. But if you decrease this, it will actually become transparent and that's what we want. So dragging this over here and now we can mask it. So the polygon line will allow us to mask whatever we want. Uh, I'm going one frame forward and I'm going to make a cool looking mask right over here that follows the shape of our YouTube logo. Uh, it's automatically placing keyframes so we don't have to do anything weird. I'm going all the way over here until it is gone and I will take this and move it to this side. And then along the way I will just make sure that it is following our original YouTube logo shape. Like this, like that. I'm simply going to keep it like this, then take the polygon and plug it into our clip. Now, of course, uh, it is the wrong way around. So we should click on the polygon, click on invert, and now we can also increase the soft edge because this is a very hard line. So soft edge, just a little bit softer like this. And now let's go back to this clip and you can see we actually have a very cool looking animation. But of course the mask is also visible right over here. So go back into the Fusion tab, click on the polygon line and where the first keyframe starts, uh, which is over here, just place a keyframe where it's outside. And here it is where it will stay for the entire time until we tell it to move. And this is what it looks like. Ooh. 
Now, there are two more things to do. I will show you how to enter into this screen. Uh, I will show you how to make some cool lightning flashes. And we're first going to do the lightning flashes because they are quite easy. Uh, first of all, if you are entering into this shot, you can also take the bokeh overlay, for example, place it over here. And now we also have some cool looking bokeh overlays on this shot. Uh, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, the way that we're going to make the flashes is by adding a solid. And the solid is found in the toolbox, toolbox, solid color. We'll place it right over here and I will make it smaller, a whole lot smaller. Something like this. And here, if we click on it, you can see the color under generator. And I will set it to white, which is right over there. Now, if we want this uh, to flicker, so right here, the uh, it is entering our phone. We can simply make this like one or two frames. Now, if you want this to flicker even more, simply add more of them. And the way to make it seem natural is by actually taking this, going to the settings and changing the composite to different opacities throughout. So it's really not noticeable. And also make sure that there's not really a pattern uh, in between these. Of course, you can add the, uh, the same adjustment layer that is making it wobble and uh, add it on top here. So it's also wobbling and uh, you might want to change around some settings, make it less extreme. So uh, decrease the speed scale, for example. Uh, either way, uh, that's the way to make flashes, simply using the solid color. So that's very easy. And now we're going to do the hardest part of this entire tutorial. It's actually going to be right over here. Uh, I'm going to select this clip because it is moving in the wrong direction. It is actually coming out of the screen. And this is because I had a different idea for this shot, uh, but now I really want to switch it around. So that's what I'm going to do. Right mouse click. Go into the change clip speed and then change the reverse speed. So tick that box, reverse speed, and then it will be turned around. And that's exactly what we want. Uh, now I'm going to have it start from uh, somewhere over here or maybe here. Uh, it depends on the music that you're using. So I'm not going to edit all of this to the music. I'm going to do that later on, but you can figure out how and where to make your cuts right. I'm only showing you how to do the more advanced things right now in this tutorial. If you really want to know how to add it to the music, you can also watch my other free courses. All right, so somewhere over here. And I want to change this screen. I actually want to change it to a shot that we used before, namely this one. I'm going to cut a piece off right over there and place it underneath here and make sure that it's covering the entire track. Uh, now, basically what I want to do is go over it into Fusion and I want to do the same little trick. I actually want to mask this out. So if we add a rectangular shape and add it over here and invert it, then we get the same type of effect that we had before. But we need to make sure that this is following our iPhone along. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. First of all, we need to match this shape. So drag on these lines, something like this, drag it upwards and make sure that it fits inside of the iPhone a little bit, like this. Uh, increase the corner radius, so we actually get some corners that look like the corners that we made ourselves. If you really want to do this well, you can also mask it by hand, but I think this is fine. And uh, now I'm basically going to click on the keyframe for height, width, and center. And now all we gotta do is move backwards and forwards in time. So right here it is filling up the screen entirely, like this. And uh, in between, we should make sure that it is following the appropriate shape. And uh, always make sure to follow the telephone. I know some others are coming in front of it. But don't worry about that. Make sure that we have this telephone covered the entire time. And we're going to fix this later on. I'm just going to keep it like this for now. It's pretty decent. Now, what we want to do is duplicate this. So Control-C, Control-V, and add it over this clip. Make sure it's connected to the outside as well. Now, the rectangular shape should disappear, which is the case because we only have this clip. What I'm going to do is add another polygon line and I will make a very rough shape. Now, make sure that we start this edge with a little bit of a curve then right over here, make an edge then right over here, make an edge and do a little bit of a curve right over here as well. Uh, and then we're just going to uh, follow this side of the phone and now it's connected. So let's connect this as well. And as you can see, we already get our screen back, which is the transparency right now. Uh, basically, we have to do the same thing. So uh, go over here and make sure that it follows the shape of this telephone. It doesn't matter if you're following the other one as well, just make sure that everything that's covering up the screen is being solved. And just make sure that it looks good. It's not that hard, simply moving around those little lines. And just for a quick example, I didn't actually do it right now. And uh, there you go. Maybe there's only this little part right here, but we are now entering into the screen and you could have selected this one, but since this nature of the shot is that it's moving inward pretty quickly, it didn't really add up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is simply use this one and then we're heading over into another shot. Uh, no problem. Uh, what you can also do is maybe make this one a little bit earlier 
and have these transition into each other by bringing this shot to the top and making an opacity for it. So now it is sort of moving into the other shot already. And uh, I like this as well. Pretty cool stuff. So that's actually the way to do it, to transition into a other shot like this. Yeah, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot about advanced editing in DaVinci Resolve. There were some pretty complex things, there were some easier things, but I hope that you got through it all the way. Now make sure to edit this to your taste. I'm not going to show you exactly how I make my edits. I simply make sure that I edit it to the beat. So I recommend you be creative with this. Click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You wanna be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.